Basically, anything fun is bad. Welcome to my world. But yeah, well, her world is our world. Hello, my name is Ludovic Slimak. I am archaeologist, specialist of Neanderthal societies, and I'm here to break down some movies and TV shows about Neanderthals. So now let's have a look to the quest for fire. At this time period, the society was very sophisticated and don't have just fur like that on, on the shoulders. But that's interesting, let's see what happened now. That's interesting. Person who attacks with a lot of fur, but are very primitive. They look like kind of the planet of the apes. Wow! So Neanderthals are fighting. That's very interesting because that that give us all our fantasies of both our ancestors. The encounter here, it's a war, it's a fight. We even don't know if these two societies ever met, so that's pretty fascinating. Oh, they kill each other. But what is interesting here is that they are both very primitive. They are wild and they are, they are very aggressive. They try to survive in the very hard world. But in fact, uh, I think that there were a tiny society, very sophisticated. You know, when you have very tiny groups, you're on very large territories, it's very rich in everything you need to live for. There are hunters, they can hunt bisons and hunters. And so, so when they see new people arriving, it's a pretty good news. They see fresh blood coming because they are going maybe to disappear because it's very tiny groups and they need to, to build their network, their interactions to survive and to have a good life. It's great fantasy. Man. <laughs> but yeah, that's great also because it's Promethean, you know, that's Promethean in the, in the mythology that's the person that brings back the fire to the humans. And so this vision, this understanding that in a, in a certain way to be human, to be a in the beginning of this civilization is to have fire, but for this fire you must have a kind of uh, a secret from the god that you have to steal. This encounter is, let's say, between 50 to 40,000 years ago. And Neanderthal did not need uh, any sapiens promete to have the secret of fire. So the idea of a very distinct way to be human is very interesting here. It's a prisoner of our, of our fantasies. The accuracy would certainly be between one and two. <laughs> the only representation that could be credible is the sapiens making fire. Even the Neanderthal looking that is not credible, but all the rest is just a uh, planet of the apes. <laughs> so a fascinating movie, 2001, A Space Odyssey. <laughs> we must be somewhere in Africa, let's say three million years ago, and maybe we're facing some kind of uh, australopithecines. The two groups and one group is taking the advantage on the other because they use bones. Yeah, it's, it's a tibia. And so he took that bone and there's a crime. I don't know if it's the first crime. So it's kind of Abel and Cain, you know, the original crime in this vision, which is pretty accurate, and plausible, but there's also an idea, the idea that 
what we are today is a result of millions of years of interactions and that began, we began to be homo with war and aggressivity and territoriality. Wow. So, so there we are, we are back in time, millions. And so by the behaviors we see there, yeah, that can fit, absolutely. It's very interesting. That's very, that's a very interesting scene. Our own way to be human is the result of, of aggressivity, territoriality, and at the end, we will become what we are because we have this long history of, of kind of interactions where we have to be better than the others. But he doesn't say it. It just open a box and he let you think about it. Let's have the generosity with Stanley Kubrick. <laughs> so let's, let's give them. So we are going to see the clan of the bear. I don't know if it's, it's absolutely true, but the way to count is, is something absolutely cultural. We know, for example, in my excavation in France, we have very early Homo sapiens at 54,000, and they wait to, to make their flint tool and their weapons particularly, so they make points. And, but to make these points in a kind of little triangle, so you have a generation or series of generation of three elements that you have to extract before to make this triangle. So there's an idea that mathematics and counting is something important. It has been also something important to understand the world around you because you are going to have migration of horses, of bison, the seasons that come, and all that is a question of counting the moment when you can have a baby or you can't have a baby. And so that's a question of mathematics, a question of counting, and it's something more or less universal. We know that we have transmission from the person who knows to the younger one who have to learn something. And then we have here something else. We have the young generation that express something to go the step after. Made the discovery which is for her, which is very normal, but for the old guy, the teacher, it's something incredible, it's a great discovery. How can we understand the evolution of techniques, the evolution of knowledge? And there's the idea that the generation that comes after you will go deeper in something and will, generation per generation, will change your own society. So in that way, it's very interesting. <laughs> Well, they have nice tones. Oh, in terms of accuracy, uh, well, we don't know, but in terms of our society, that is something at the moment A will become something else in moment B. And the question of generations and the transmission and the fact that the young generation will not do the same thing and will bring something else. Now we are looking for the crudes. Most days we spend in our cave, in the dark. Night after night, day. So it's very nice because there's a good poesy. So it's there are, there are poetry in the text. The drawings are pretty interesting also. But what we see, it's a Western family. <laughs> and so this is uh, dad and mom and dad, and the grandparents and the little children. And even today, it's not working like that. It's working like that in Europe and in some part of America. But uh, by the way, there's a lot of solutions. You can share genes in many ways. You can be the father and the uncle, and a woman can have maybe same 
10 males they love and have children with them. But there we have a little group, a little family, they go in their caves, it's like it's, a, it's their home, you know, it's, a, it's a Western home, so we have a great projection. We were the last ones around. The Earths, mosquito bite, frogs. Wow, we, we just saw a giant mosquito. It, it's working like a plane. We must understand is that in this time period, the Paleolithic, let's say, we are... I don't know when we are, but let's say we are 30,000 years ago. Well, the animals are the animals we know today, but of course they are mammoths, but you know, they are in the family of elephantides or like elephants. And uh, so the, the fauna you will find in Europe, for example, will be the fauna you have actually in Africa with an adaptation to the northern latitude, to the cold environment, but there should be something that we know around us. Painted on the cave walls. Anything new is bad, curiosity is bad, going out at night is bad, basically anything fun is bad. Welcome to my world. But yeah, well, her world is our world, very clearly, so you don't even need to go in, in the past, just go horizontally in other continents and things will be very different. And so for just children living with all the group and the dad is only a part and all the other can be the uncles and everybody is in charge of the education and not only daddy saying this is forbidden. And daddy can be good, eh, by the way. New is always bad. No, he was nice. What? Excuse me? He? Well, I... He was a warthog, but then... that's interesting because I realize that during the Paleolithic, the families had the same problem than today. <laughs> I don't know, maybe this film is talking about my family and my children. <laughs> going back to the cave, and you're going to stay in there until you're older than, uh, you know, <laughs> her. Uh, what? Uh. You can't keep me inside forever! Prehistoric families, Paleolithic family, is against novelty as it represents some kind of danger. These societies in the past, like today, we have rules, we have to obey to certain rules, to certain way to be socially. And when we, we change this way, we don't like that. There's no society that really like really like the difference and they have rules and based on these rules the society can reproduce itself and can continue to live it's very interesting it's a, that's something true in terms of accuracy i would give a, a two but in terms of uh, if we don't just look at the accuracy but the there was a kind of message but it's a kind of universal message of the relation between a traditional society and novelty, then it's pretty good. I would say give a seven. Thanks for watching. You can get my book The Naked Neanderthal by clicking somewhere below. And don't forget to subscribe for more videos like that to the Penguin channel.